I promise I'm not turning into a channel that just makes cafe content, okay? Yes, I know my last video was literally a 44 minute video about cafes, but I promise I have a very good reason for traveling all the way to Sendai for a Demon Slayer cafe and making this video. Number one, there is technically a permanent Demon Slayer cafe in Tokyo, which is where I live. And it's at Ufotable Cafe, which operates on a weekly lottery system. And I've actually applied to Ufotable Cafe several times, and I have been rejected about seven times. It doesn't matter if I applied for 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, I was unsuccessful every time. And eventually, I just gave up. So when it was announced that this pop-up cafe would not require reservations and also not be in busy Tokyo, I thought this would be my only chance to eat a Demon Slayer themed cafe menu, which many people have requested. Number two, there was an exhibit happening alongside the cafe and I really enjoy exhibits. So I thought that would make the journey even more worth it. And number three, most importantly, the menu looked incredible. I'm not going to show it now because I don't want to spoil the surprise, but the menu looked way better than what you would find at your average collab cafe. And of course, I wouldn't be going through all this trouble if I wasn't actively keeping up with the recently finished season of Demon Slayer, which I was able to do thanks to NordVPN. I've actually been using this VPN to watch a bunch of different anime this season. Living in Japan means that Crunchyroll isn't accessible for me and Japanese Netflix doesn't always have English subtitles available for the shows I want to watch. But with NordVPN, I can switch over to the US with a click of a button and watch with English subtitles so I can keep up with weekly episodes. But that's not all that NordVPN can do. It also helps you stay safe online from cybersecurity threats by managing your passwords and alerting you when your credentials have been compromised. Their threat protection feature helps you stay protected from phishing scams, malware, and unwanted malvertising. And with my link, you can get four months extra on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash emerichu. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guaranteed. Watch the shows you want and keep yourself protected with today's sponsor, NordVPN. Link will be included in the description if you're interested. I don't like traveling alone, so I brought along Daru, who at this point is extremely used to getting roped into my spontaneous cafe adventures. But also, she's a big Demon Slayer fan. We decided the smartest thing to do would be to take the bullet train to Sendai the night before so that we could head straight to the exhibit the day after, rather than force ourselves to leave super early in the morning. The Shinkansen from Tokyo to Sendai cost 11,410 yen per person, and on top of that, even though the cafe didn't require reservations, the exhibit did, and it was 3,710 yen per person. So we booked two for 10 a.m. on the 25th of July. And since we were staying overnight, we also booked a hotel that was close to the venue, which cost 8,874 yen. So we made it to Sendai on the evening of the 24th and got some yaki niku for dinner at Nikugen Sendai where we ordered some tasty meat stairs and my favorite thing was this thinly sliced beef mixed with egg yolk over rice. It was so good. Nikugen isn't unique to Sendai but we really wanted something meaty and within walking distance to our hotel. It was a very satisfying dinner and just what I needed to knock out early so I'd be well rested for a very busy morning. In the morning, we woke up bright and early to get ready for our 10 a.m. exhibit reservation, and I decided to wear a Mitsuri Kanroji inspired outfit because she's my favorite character. Unfortunately, I was only allowed to take a picture of the display at the very beginning of the exhibit. All other photography or video recording was strictly prohibited. The closest thing I can show you are some pictures of the exhibit in a pamphlet I bought at the merch store, but even then, I can't show you everything because if you haven't finished reading the manga, the exhibit has a heavy amount of spoilers. So for the sake of the anime-only viewers, I can't show everything. Since I don't have video footage of the exhibit, I'm just going to very briefly describe exactly what we saw, and if you're like, Emily, I don't care about the exhibit, I just want to see the cafe, then feel free to use the timestamps to skip ahead. So the exhibit displayed the original Demon Slayer manga pages drawn by Koyoharu Gotoge. And since this was the first time I'd ever seen the original manga pages of anything, I was really surprised at how big the pages were in person. Because you sort of get used to viewing manga in their much smaller book form or through like online scans on your phone or something. And this was honestly really surreal to me because you could see the original blue sketch lines peeking around the line art and all the spots where Gotoge used white out to fix inking mistakes and add white detailing and you could see the pen strokes in the inking. 
Like there's so many little details in the art that you wouldn't notice in the scans. And the skill and technique really show in these original pages. Like I started tearing up a little bit while going around the exhibit because I was just in awe of how much work and skill went into every panel. And getting to see a mangaka's original work up close and personal like that is just really inspiring for me as an artist. They also had a lot of really cool displays for each Hashira and a statue recreation of Muzan. But again, no pictures allowed, unfortunately. Since then, I've actually gone to a Death Note manga exhibit where we were allowed to take pictures of the displays, but not the original manga pages, which were incredible to look at in person. And a Yotsubato manga exhibit where they surprisingly let us take pictures of everything. Like, I'm wholly convinced that Kiyohiko Azuma is not a real human being because his attention to detail is insane. Both of these titles have been a huge part of my childhood, so it was honestly incredible getting to see their original manga pages and illustrations. So all that to say, I highly recommend going to a manga exhibit if you get the chance. I promise it's a really, really cool experience, and ticket prices are surprisingly not that expensive. Probably because they know you're gonna blow all your money anyway on the merch that they always have at the end. Speaking of which... The merch store at the end had a ton of stuff, and before my trip, I'd actually messaged my friend Hana to ask if she was interested in any of the goods since she's a really big Demon Slayer fan. She let me know which ones caught her interest and said, Feel free to pick one or two and surprise me, but please do not actually buy them all and blow your money, okay? Okay! So naturally, I got everything she pointed out to me. This included a box of Demon Slayer printed cookies, a set of colored paper art and acrylic block, a set of acrylic minifigures, and a wooden tray with Tanjiro's image. For myself, I got a plastic poster, a file folder set with the exhibit illustrations, and a second file folder set which had the cutest art, some Demon Slayer Yokan for the Geeks Plus office, a ticket holder, the exhibit pamphlet book, a sticker set, a bottle of Romani candies made to look like medicine from Tamayo, and my personal favorite, a little Nesco box keychain with a peephole that revealed a tiny little Nesco sitting in the box. As a freebie for attending the exhibit, we also received a thank you illustration featuring Tanjiro and Nezuko. And lastly, for Didus, I purchased this box of Demon Slayer bath salts, which had unique scents for each character. Next stop was the cafe. Luckily for us, since it was a Tuesday afternoon in Sendai, there was zero wait time, so we were seated immediately. We were only allowed to take pictures of the cafe area, so please bear with this slideshow, but the walls were basically giant screens where they showed various manga panels showcasing each of the nine Hashira, and they cycled through the cover illustrations of all the manga volumes. I thought this was really cool. These screens were huge, and I got really excited every time it looped back to Meet City's panels. The cafe was also really nice and spacious, and as soon as we sat down, we were given a menu and a checklist to mark off all the things that we wanted to order. And we got quite a bit, starting with Tanjiro's water breathing float. This was a melon soda float with cream and white chocolate waves. We thought the presentation of this drink was really well done and it tasted pretty good. The Kocho Sisters Ramane float. This drink included butterfly pea jelly combined with ramane, which is apparently Kanao's favorite food. This was a really tasty combination and the addition of the butterfly shaped chocolate was a really nice touch. Muzan soft cream. This was a milk-flavored soft-serve ice cream in a bamboo charcoal cone topped with dry raspberries, cookie crumble, and raspberry chocolate made to resemble tentacles. Daru really enjoyed this one, and she finished it all by herself. I also ordered an Inosuke-printed character latte just for the cute art. I think I would have preferred foam instead of thick cream, but the latte tasted fine. The Sun-Breathing Kima Curry this was the most delicious item we ordered. There were fried seasoned spring roll skins shaped to resemble Tanjiro's fire breathing technique with rice, ground beef, and fresh tomatoes at the bottom. This one was super crunchy, savory, and flavorful. The most expensive item on the menu was this Hashira themed gozen set with a taste of the favorite foods of all nine Hashira. It also came with a sheet detailing which dish represented each Hashira. There was Salmon and radish for Tomioka, sweet potato salad for Rengoku, ginger tsukudani for Shinobu, fugu sashimi for Uzui, boiled radish for Muichiro, tororo kombu for Obanai, ohagi for Sanemi, sakura mochi for Mitsuri, and rice with salmon roe for Gyome. I thought this was a really impressive and creative set meal, and it was really fun to try all the different flavors. 
For dessert, we ordered the Nesco Bamboo Chocolate. This gorgeous dessert made to look like Nesco's bamboo cup was made with chocolate and inside there was berry puree, bittersweet chocolate cream, and crunchy crepe dough. Nesco's favorite food is competo, which are those little star candies. So there was also a little garnish of competo around the plate. This was such a visually pleasing dish, but it was a bit too chocolatey for me personally. So after trying some, I let Daru handle the rest of it and she completely cleaned the plate. One thing to know about me is if you go eating out with me, you are guaranteed an extra helping of dessert. In addition to the items you order to eat in, there were also a few items available for takeout that we decided to purchase. One was a beef nabe bento made to look like the beef bento Rengoku ate in the Mugen Train movie. The sukiyaki was made with beef from Sendai and Hitomebore rice from Miyagi Prefecture. We saved it to eat on the train back home to Tokyo, and it was, in fact, umai. The second takeout item was Rengoku's Memento Chocolate, which was white, raspberry, and passion fruit chocolate made to look like the handguard of his sword. Lastly, we had to get these Inosuke cookies. They were so stinking adorable. So I bought one to take home and one to share with the Geeks Plus office. After a very fun and filling meal, Daru and I decided to do some shopping at Loft before we headed back home. So we browsed the stationery aisle, I found the perfect birthday gift for Connor, and I got myself a super cute strawberry printed UV sun umbrella and this rain umbrella shaped like a dahlia. Sendai is also known for their Zunda shakes, which is basically edamame boiled and mashed and mixed with sugar and blended with milk. It was an interesting flavor, but to be honest, I wasn't really a fan. Even though we were in Sendai for such a short time, it was a really fun trip, and I know this will probably not be the last time I go on an overnight cafe-motivated excursion. If we're just looking at the costs of Shinkansen tickets, hotel, exhibit tickets, merchandise, and cafe food, for two people, this entire trip cost 117,164 yen, which in today's conversion rate is around $800. So this definitely takes the crown for most expensive cafe trip I've ever done. But I'd say it was worth it. I give this cafe a glowing 5 out of 5. For those of you interested in this particular exhibit, it will be held next in Okayama from December 15th to February 18th. Additional information hasn't been released yet at the time of this recording, so I actually don't know if they're going to be doing a collab cafe as well. I'll be including a link to the overview of the event if you want to stay updated. Whoa, looks like demon blood. <laughs> 